Hello, friends uh, of Jesus Christ. I come to you to share with you the message uh, with, uh, about the life of Jesus Christ, especially early life of Jesus Christ. So today, there's something I believe it is going to help you in your life because most of us, we need to know many things about Jesus Christ. And so today, I want to share with you something that maybe you really know about Jesus Christ. And if you know it, maybe you've forgotten it, but at least you can learn uh, from it. When we go to the book of uh, Luke chapter 2, the book, uh, the, the book of Luke chapter 2, uh, is where we are going to get a message, but we are, I'm going to read with you, uh, to you the other book, extra uh, knowledge to, to add on on your spiritual growth. Let us have the word of prayer. Father, this moment we are going to study something about Jesus. And so, Father, please, let your Holy Spirit, because he's the one that Jesus Christ promised that is going to reveal more about Jesus. Let him, Father, open our spiritual eyes that we can know about Jesus Christ, something new that will touch our heart and move our heart and love towards him more. Father, thank you, because you're going to do this. In Jesus' name, amen. So, friend, welcome. Welcome again. I believe it's a new day for you. God has been with us. He has left us, has given us his mercy and grace to survive. Okay, it's not of, because of our goodness. Uh, it's because of his mercy. Because his mercy always new each and every morning. Okay, let us go to the book of Luke. Chapter 2, verse forty. 6 and 47. That's where we are going to find something important. And the Bible says, And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking him, asking them questions. We know Jesus, the parents had forgotten Jesus when they went to the temple for the Passover, uh, that the feast of the Passover. The, he was 12 by that moment, okay? And then, at the time of returning home, of those days of the feast, they forgot him because they were busy uh, about stories. Do you remember the sermon about that priest? Do you remember the, the explanation from the scribe? Do you remember the, uh, what, uh, what is your business? And uh, where are you living? I'm living in Galilee. I'm living in Nazareth. Yeah, and uh, how is life there? The life is good. And so they were busy talking, busy talking that they forgot their child. So if sometimes parents, well, we, we forget our children. What happened? But my my, my my sermon today is not based on what happened to, to, to Mary and Joseph, but we want to talk about Jesus, okay? We want to talk about Jesus, friend. And, uh, and so Jesus Christ remained there. And after they, they, when they were walking, they found that they did not have that, that child. So they had to, to, to start asking, maybe he has been taken by the friend. But no, until they started to move backward to go until they found him in the temple. After hearing the, the voice, familiar voice of the child. And something happened when he remained there. They found him uh, asking questions, hearing and asking them questions. Verse 47 says, And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. It seems no scriptures. His understanding was so wide. But what the the, the point to understand here? So we're going to read the so I'm going to, to, to fetch you some information from the book of, of Desire of Ages, chapter, uh, it's chapter 9, but uh, you can follow the pages, page 84, uh, paragraph 2, we are going to read with some of the words from paragraph 3, but I want you to bear with me so that we can understand something about Jesus Christ. Uh, written by Ellen Dwight, she says, As the condition of the people began to open to his mind, 
He saw that the requirements of society and the requirements of God were in constant collision. Men departing from the word of God and exalting theories of their own inventions and their own invention. They are observing traditional lights that possess no virtue. Their service was a mere round of ceremonies. Their sacred truth it was designed to teach where uh, their sacred truth it was designed to teach were hidden from the worshippers. He saw that in their faithless service they found no peace. In their faithless services they found no peace. Means they were doing service for God, but those services had no faith. And they did not have peace doing that. What this message can go to us? Maybe we are church members. We are church members, but we are department leaders. You have been given the, the certain services to do in the church of God. Maybe you are a pastor. You have been given, uh, the, you, you, see, you, you say, I have a call to preach the gospel. But in the gospel that you are doing, you have no peace. You have no peace visiting members, pastors, preachers. You have no peace in the, the thing that you're doing. Faithless service. They have no peace. He saw that in their faithless service, they found no peace. That's what Jesus Christ saw. They did not know the freedom of spirit that would come to them by serving God in truth. Freedom of spirit. Hallelujah. Do you understand that? What does it mean to the freedom of spirit? Let me explain it later. It means you do something for God, but it's, it's, it's just a joy. It's a joy for you to do it, but it increases the experience of your spiritual work with God. You are serving and knowing God. You're serving and knowing God. That's what angels have. Jesus had come to teach the meaning of the worship of God. He could not sanction the mingling of human requirements to the divine precepts. Mostly in the div and mass denominations. No denomination is um, uh, at its safe zero uh, from mingling with the human requirement with the divine precepts. You say, this is light. This is according to our church. This is according to our church. This is the church. This is the church. Not the world. You must know the divine precepts, know what the word of God says, and build our foundation from there. It's not about the church. It's not about the, the pastor said this. The, 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 the general conference has uh, said this. The general conference has said this. But is it accordance to the Bible? We must defend the truth, not by the statement of man, but by the statement of God. Hallelujah. That's how Jesus Christ did things. He did not attack the precepts or practice of the land. He did not attack the precepts or the practice of the land teachers. But when he proved of his own simple habits, he presented the word of God in justification of his conduct. Friend, I want to tell you something here that we can learn. What Jesus Christ did is different from most of our preachers what they are doing. We, 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 we study the truth to defend, to tell people not to live and they will have to ask. Hallelujah. Living, asking that maybe I've come, then I go direct people, keep the Sabbath, do this. No, yes, it's good to tell, but it's better to tell Jesus. And then a person says, why? Why person has, has insulted you and you haven't reacted? But normally we human beings, uh, if we, we, we react, we, we are insulted, we find ourselves, we, we react. And you, you bring him the word of God. Jesus saying, learn of me because I'm meek and lowly. And then you shall find peace in your soul. Say, Jesus Christ has changed my heart. He has humbled me. So, you, you, you bring the word of God after being asked. He did not go to those Pharisees to attack them with scriptures and verses. But it, was, it seemed to be different from them. But when he proved his own simple habits, he, he presented the word of God. He did not attack those precepts. In every gentle submissive word, Jesus tried to preach those 
whom he came into contact with. There is something here. They urged him to receive the maxims and tradition that had been handed down from the ancient libraries, but he asked for the authority in the whole writ, or I like say, all writings, the scriptures. So it means those scribes and rabbis, they left some of the, uh, of the teachings so that others accept, accept them. So they sanctioned them to be like holy lightings, holy sayings from God. But they were talks of love. That's why we, we must be careful. What is, your denom uh, what is done in your denomination, which seems to be like holy thing, but it's just a tradition. It has no script, it has no foundation in the Bible, in the world, not to live uh, that uh, church elders say this is good. No. Ask it, is it from the Bible or you saw it's good? You must not work according to human uh, inventions of the scripture. When he would hear every word that proceeds from the, uh, he would hear every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord, but he could not obey the invention, the inventions of man. He could not obey the inventions of man. Jesus seemed to know the scripture from beginning to, to end, and he presented them in their true import. That's a problem. He presented the scripture in their true import. Sometimes people interpret the scripture that's not, which is not wrong, is not light. That's why he told those uh, scri those Sadducees uh, from the, the, when he was talking to them in the book of Matthew 22, uh, 29, uh, when he reproved, the, they asked him about the, that widow who had seven husbands. So, yes, all of them died. And Jesus Christ said that. You punish not you punish because you err because you don't know the scripture or the power of God. But there were people who were studying the Bible by that moment, okay? But Jesus, Jesus Christ said, You do not know the scripture or the power of God. They were dry, they did not know the scripture. But Jesus Christ knew the scripture that he presented the scripture in their true import. That is how things have to work. Friends, we have a lot of things to learn about Jesus Christ. The Nabis were ashamed to be instructed by a child. They came as to their office to explain the scripture, that it was the, his praise to accept their interpretation. They were indigenous that it should stand in opposition to their word. Friends, Jesus Christ knew the Bible. Hallelujah. So if we go to him and ask Jesus, Teach us the word. He will teach us the word. He will make the word to be, to have its true import. You know this Bible, if you read it, uh, uh, not knowing the true import of each word, what God intended. You know some people, they are reading the story, and then they take every statement, every statement, and then they use it. But not move, not, no, just to find the true import of that story, what, what God was trying to share, what God wanted people to understand, what the principle there. Because if you understand this principle, which is in the scripture, your life will be at peace. But if you don't understand the word of God in those words, you're going. Thus you need to understand the word of God among the words. And all these are words of God. But we need to understand the word of God from the words of men. Hallelujah. But you cannot separate them. You have to find the true import of, those, uh, of the word of God. That's what Jesus Christ said. I see page uh, 85. They knew that no authority could be found in scripture for their tradition. They had that in their spiritual understanding, Jesus was far in advance of them. He did not go to theological student uh, school that they had. He did not sit at their feet. Jesus Christ had three, as two, had two teachers. First one, his mother. And the second one, nature and God. He learned himself the Bible. So the scriptures are clear for a person to understand. As long as you are after a teachable spirit, you study to know it for yourself. You pray to God to teach you. The Father is so merciful. 
to allow his spirit to come to you so that you may understand. Hallelujah. Yet they were angry because they did not obey their dictates. Something else we are going to learn later, but today let us finish up here because I believe it is enough. At least you can get something to apply in your life. Okay, friend? May God bless you as you take the Bible to learn the scripture. Jesus Christ said, start the word of God. Learn of him. Put his words in your heart. Because every, every place where we see God said, God said, God said, God said, who said? Jesus. Because Jesus Christ has been the person of God who has been revealing the Father. Nobody knows the Father except the Son. And whom the Son, and nobody knows the Son except the Father. And whom the Son wants to reveal. So, my friend, we need to study the word of God. We need to not work at the traditions. What are traditions that you are keeping which are not biblical? If you are doing things which are not biblical, choose to live what is biblical. Do not start to tell. You are going to put yourself in the danger. Just choose to live what is light. I do remember, for example, myself, when I came to know the truth about the Sabbath, I did not go to that church and tell them that, oh, okay, today I'm leaving your church. I decided to go to the Sabbath, the Seventh-day Adventist church. And one day I met that, I met the, one of the leaders of that church. Who knew me? Because though I was a new member there at the church, but I, I, I was thankful to God that he made me to be known to people. And then that person asked me, why are you not coming to the church? They had given me the CDs, two CDs, which made me know the truth. I was not preached by anyone. Only the CDs which I got from the church, the, the, the Sunday church. So after li uh, listening and watching, so I made a decision. I prayed, then God confirmed through dream, and then I had to find the church. And so I went to the church, kept, uh, kept the Sabbath, and as time went on, I found one of the teachers on that Sunday church. It was a big church, okay? And then he asked me, why are you not coming to our church? I said, take your CDs first. I've, had, I've discovered the truth about the Sabbath. And he said to me these words, till today, will you be able to keep it? Means it, it, it uh, by his word, he meant that it is hard to keep the Sabbath. And I say, hey, in my heart, because you know it. So I said, okay, let me keep it. I kept, uh, I moved. But you know, my friend, do not live by what the man says. Live by what God says. Hallelujah. May God bless you, friend. Have a good day. In Jesus' name. Let us thank the Lord. Father, thank you because of your mercy and grace. You have allowed us today morning for some people, it's morning. For some people, it's evening. But all oh, it's for your word because it's new every day. Father, thank you for this word. Help us to learn from Jesus. Not obeying human inventions, but walking by thy word. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a good day. Remember to share, to subscribe. May God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.